Hello there. A viewer reminded me the other day of an extremely weird moment in Teen Wolf Season 5 when there was this kid with what looked like wings or what might have at one time been wings on his back. I honestly had forgotten this existed, even though I just did a watch through of that whole season a few months ago. I guess I forgot it because it was literally just a second or two on screen and then it didn't actually go anywhere because the only reason that whole locked in a cage setup existed was so Theo could save Liam and Hayden instead of Scott. In turn, that then drove the wedge further between the McCall pack members. Anyway. That got me thinking about the other forgettable and useless hybrids from Teen Wolf Season 5. And after two days of microphone problems, here we are with my list of the worst Chimera. I'm Paul Ray, and if you want to join me each week on these journeys back to Beacon Hills, consider subscribing to the channel, and if you really want YouTube all up in your business, hit the bell to be notified when I post the next installment. Now, I'm not being overly harsh when I say that many of the Dread Doctor's creations were useless. I mean, Theo was trying to build a fighting force. He had a whole pile of dead Chimera to choose from, including one with scorpion stingers, but he decided to bring back Cory. Now, I'm not saying Cory is the worst Chimera. He came in real handy against the Ghost Riders, but we didn't know that when Theo was looking for fighters, so there must have been a whole lot of uselessness in that pile if the invisible twink made it to the Chimera Varsity Squad. Seriously though, Cory turns out to be one of the more useful Chimera and is therefore at the very bottom of the worst list. Does that make sense? His powers seem to be simple camouflage, but it turns out he was going completely out of phase with our reality whenever he went invisible. This suggests to me that he got a little more of the Ghost Rider juice than the others did. He's so powerful he was able to merge the Wild Hunt with the real world over a large area. That's a superpower, albeit a very specific and limited use superpower. Attention all passengers, the train will be arriving in eight minutes. Next up we have Belasco. The big guy was created for a very specific purpose. He was to use his Garuda Claws to siphon the Alpha Spark out of Scott McCall and then get him out of the way so the Dread Doctors could get on with their master plan. The Garuda is basically a giant bird. Sometimes it's depicted as a bird-man hybrid that serves as transportation for the god Vishnu in certain mythology. In the Teen Wolf universe, we only got to see its claws on Belasco, who was mostly werewolf in appearance. His claws were the best part about him because they were basically spark siphoners. You could plug them into a hellhound, a werewolf, or a were-coyote and steal their abilities. Well, you could do that if you weren't Belasco. He failed to accomplish his mission, and the Dread Doctors retired him. On a side note, I asked Jeff Davis why he had birds fly out of Belasco's chest when he died. I wondered because I half remembered this visual from a nursery rhyme when I was a kid. According to Jeff, they did it because it looked cool. Now, to be honest, he actually said they did it to make it clear that the Dread Doctor's process was weird science and supernatural and akin to magic. But basically, all that boils down to they did it because it looked cool. Speaking of disappointing explanations for really neat stuff, Josh's electrical abilities were officially because he was part electric eel. Yeah, I was hoping for some amazing mythical or supernatural creature with lightning bolts like the Native American Thunderbird or a Japanese Thunder Beast. But no, I asked Jeff and according to him, Josh is just plain old electric eel. Still, these powers were very helpful in certain situations. 
not so much against a hellhound, but then again, what is really? So no, Josh is not the worst chimera. Tracy was also useful. She might have been one of the most useful if she hadn't been so emotionally damaged. You can't beat the Canima for durability and strength. The Venom is useful in several ways too, as is the tail. People always seem to forget about the tail. Again, the only thing that got in Tracy's way was Tracy, right up until she let Theo get this close. You can give me your power. I mean, come on, girl. You saw what he did to Josh, right? Is that why I'm here with you? Entering the realm of the less useful Chimera, we have Theo and Hayden. I rank them together because they're both mostly werewolf. I mean, all the Chimeras had werewolf as a base, but these two are mostly werewolf. Hayden has a little wear jaguar and Theo a little wear coyote. But really, I mean, they're just Wish.com werewolves with the added ability to walk through mountain ash. That makes them kind of basic for this universe. Ticking just over the line into the useless category, we find Donovan and his amazing ability to sprout teeth in all kinds of disgusting ways. Yes, he could bite you with his hand, but these randomly occurring Wendigo features don't really get him very far and apparently make it difficult to climb. Donovan's real superpowers are his ability to succumb to Theo's obvious manipulation and to make Styles feel guilty. Next up is the coolest of the useless chimeras. I mean, Lucas could throw up scorpion stingers on his arms, which is super cool, but he apparently could only do this when he was horny, which makes him mostly useless. On balance, as a weapon, Lucas could be very useful as, well, as long as you have time to get him aroused before you need him to fight. Scott speculates that Lucas might be made from a Sumerian mythological creature that was part man, part scorpion. While it probably is Sumerian in origin, the surviving texts that talk about them are Babylonian. Scorpion men were warriors created by a god to fight other gods and are mentioned as guards to the gates of the sun god in the Epic of Gilgamesh. Anyway, cool legend, poor execution on the part of the Dread Doctors, leaving us with a boyfriend that you don't dare touch and a weapon you can't use. Now we're up to the winged wonder that started this whole video. We don't know what animal or supernatural creature gave Zack his wings. The vibrating action of the nubbins reminds me more of an insect than a bird. I've heard people speculate that it was something cool like a fury or a succubus. But from the size and placement, I get more cockroach or cricket or maybe even bumblebee. Anyway, the wing thing was just to distract us from the fact that this character's only purpose was to provide explication about the process of becoming a chimera. First, you forget. You don't know who you are or what you're doing. Then you get violent. Don't worry. Black is okay. It's only really over when you start bleeding other stuff when it starts turning silver. So yeah, his only superpower was explaining stuff succinctly. Almost up to the worst of the Chimera as we reach Noah. Yeah, what to say about Noah? All we actually saw him do was Capri Sun some blood bags and then get lost in the tunnels. He was apparently part Berserker, which is where he gets the bone spikes, but this actually doesn't make much sense because the bone things were armor that the Berserkers wore on the outside but the Dread Doctors could mix anything with anything, so we get what amounts to a walking mechanical pencil that clicks out bone instead of lead. His bone shards eventually become the unobtainium that the hospital needs to save Sheriff Stalinsky, so that got the whole gang off searching in the tunnels and thus revealed Noah's real purpose. He was only there to create a snipe hunt plot line. Finally, we're up to the absolute worst chimera, no offense to the actor, she worked with what she was given, but seriously, who designed this quill girl or needle fingers or whatever she was supposed to be? 
What were they thinking when they said, yeah, long, wispy, and fragile-looking claws, and let's put her in a red turtleneck sweater so the audience instantly thinks of Freddy Krueger? What exactly were these things for? Knitting, maybe? I mean, yeah, she could probably scratch her own back really effectively, but these are in no way weapons unless they're loaded with venom or something, and even then, you'd have to get really close or be really accurate to hypodermic somebody. Of course, we don't know what she could do because they only ever showed her dead. These design choices also really screwed over Kira because it looks like she just straight up murdered a normal girl with a bad manicure. But getting Kira in trouble was kind of the point. That, and of course, the slap. The lady with the barbed keratin remains nameless, but is by far the worst chimera. Thanks for watching. Y'all go do the YouTube dance now with the liking and the commenting and the subscribing if you feel like it. I'll see you next time we go back to Beacon Hills.